Uh, how would you describe the family of Jose Rizal? Well, Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861 to Francisco Rizal Mercado y Aleandro and Theodora Alonso Yolanda y Quintos in the town of Calamba in Laguna province. He had nine sisters and one brother. His parents were leaseholders of Hacienda and an occupying rice farm held by the Dominicans. For the second question is, how wealthy was the Rizal family? The Rizal family lived in a suspicious house with a large basement where an animals produce were kept. They lived comfortably. Important details of Dr. Jose Rizal. Jose Potashi Rizal Mercado Y. Alonso Rolanda was a portrait, physician, poet par excellence, and a novelist who inspired the Philippine nationalist movement. He died at the age of 35, executed by the Spanish colonial master, who ruled the Philippines for 350 years. Jose Rizal is considered a hero because throughout his lifetime, he fought for the freedom of, of our country. And what makes him different from other liberators words instead of using force and aggressions to free us from the gasps of the Spaniards. Jose, Jose Rizal expressed his love for our country throughout novels, essays, and articles. Jose Rizal educated his people about their social standing by writing his The No Limit Tangeri and El Futurism. He applied his intelligence and talents to achieve love life for the sake of our country and the Filipino people. Even after the death of Jose Rizal, these pieces of literature enabled the Filipinos to inherit the spirit of Rizal, and eventually the Filipinos to achieve victory. Rizal will be remembered as a Philippine national hero and the heart of the Philippines' revolution by every Filipino. Fun fact, did you know that Rizal was born with a very large head? Well, that may be the reason why he is so smart. Rizal's first teacher was his mother, and he was taught at the age of three the alphabet and basic prayers. At the age of five, Rizal's talent in pencil sketches and clay moldings were discovered, and at the age of eight, he wrote his first poem entitled Sa Aking Mga Kababata, in which the theme revolves around the love of our language. Rizal was first privately tutored by Celestino Nupano by Padua and lastly Monroy, who was the classmate of Rizal's father. After Monroy's death, Rizal was sent to study in a private school in Binyan. And there, Rizal surpassed all his classmates academically, especially in subjects such as Spanish and Latin. Because of Rizal's intellectual superiority, uh, Rizal was bullied and his classmates even told him lies just to discredit him from the eyes of their teacher. Nevertheless, Rizal was still one of the best students in class. Rizal also studied in Ateneo Municipal de Manila where he gained his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1877. Jose Rizal studied philosophy and letters during his first year in the University of Santo Tomas. Rizal was unhappy at his Dominican institution due to discrimination of Filipino students against the Spaniards. Rizal decided to study in Spain after finishing the fourth year of his medical course. In Spain, he continued his studies in medicine at the Universidad Central de Madrid. He finished the degree of licentiate in medicine 
in 1884 and finished degree of philosophy and letters in 1885. He finished his studies and this to him was the realization of the bigger part of his ambition. Rizal studied in University of Heidelberg and completed in 1887 his eye specialization. Rizal excelled at martial arts, teaching, journalism, and many other. Rizal stood hard in his dreams through his remarkable talents and hard work. Rizal reminded us that without education, no reform is possible and no measure can give the result desired. Dr. Rizal was a famous writer. He undeniably excelled and made fun of it. Two of his most prominent writings are No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo. Both works were influenced by Rizal's worldview, philosophies, and way of life during Spanish colonial period. It is about the fictional Philippines that is based on politics and history. One of the reasons why he wrote these books was to make a reform. He emphasized the deeds of the colonizers on how they illfully treated Filipinas and pushed them to work on heavy loads. The illustrative values were embodied by the characters in the works. Additionally, it portrays the notions of Filipino as a people that are unified in their experience of oppression. Dr. Jose Rizal admitted that the title of his novel, No Limitangire, was derived from the passage in the Bible in which Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, Don't touch me. The main purpose of this novel was to show the lives of the Filipino people during the Spanish colonial period in which they cry and suffer against the abusive Spanish officials. He wanted to expose the cruelty and corruption of the government because the Filipino people were ignorant at that time. No Limitangere is considered to be romantic, but it is more socio-historical because of its nature, and most of the issues discussed in the novel can still be seen today. Spanish colonial authorities that time declared it as against the government. After Rizal learned the death of Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Asinto Zamora, this put an indelible ink in his mind as he wrote the sequel of his first novel entitled El Filibusterismo, which means the reign of greed. He expressed conviction that their treatment and deaths at the hand of the Spanish authorities was unjust. No Limitangere was much different than El Filibusterismo. With No Limitangere, Rizal encouraged the people to ask and aspire for change and liberation. Meanwhile, in El Filibusterismo, Rizal urged the society to open its eyes to reality and rebel against the Spanish government for its oppression and abuse. In No Limitangere, there is aspiration, beauty, romance and mercy. In El Filibusterismo, the, reader, the readers will only feel bitterness and hatred, and even the characters' personalities seem to have undergone radical change. Because of this, he was executed by the Spanish colonial government for the crime of rebellion after the Philippine, Philippine Revolution broke out, because it was inspired by his writings. The very reason intellect is present within us so that for us to use it in times of need. That intellect roots from education, which we hope that it doesn't climb us from the truth, but only to reveal what we truly desire, justice. The current scenes of Rizal's life was made possible by tedious efforts of the Filipinos to urge to educate the new generation in the next of what we are as Filipinos. The Rizal law or officially designated as Republic Act No. 1425 is an act to include in the curriculum of all public and private schools, colleges, and universities courses on the life, works, and writings of Jose Rizal, particularly his novels No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo, authorizing the printing and distribution thereof and for other purposes. It is Senador Claro M. Recto who authored the Rizal deal while Senator Jose Laurel Sr., who was then the chairman of the Committee of Education at that time, sponsored the bill in the Senate. Both of them were known for the great sense of nationalism, and this nationalism serves as the foundation to come up with this Republic Act, to set our country free from the hands of others and stand up with our, with our own exactly the idea and values 
that results drove Puno 54. However, the bill was meant in intense opposition from the Catholic Church. Oppositions argued that the bill would go against the freedom of conscience and religion. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, submitted a pastoral letter to which, according, Rizal violated the Canon Law 1399, which forbids or bans books that attack or ridicule the Catholic doctrine and practices. Furthermore, oppositors pointed out that Rizal admitted that he did not only attack the friars who acted deceptively on the Filipinos, but also the Catholic faith itself. They suggested a reading material for students as to what they called the Rizalian Anthology, a collection of Rizal's literary works that contain the patriotic philosophy, excluding the two novels, The Nole Metangere and El Filibusterismo. Recto and Laurel defended the bill and argued that the only objective of the bill is to keep the memory of the national hero alive in every Filipino's mind. To emanate Rizal as he peacefully fought for freedom and not to go against the religion. Due to apparently never-ending debate on the Rizal bill, approved amendments were formulated through ideas of the three senators. After the revised amendments, the bill was finally passed on May 17, 1956 and was signed into law as Republic Act 1425 by President Ramon Magsaysay on June 12, 1956, the Independence Day. As we reach the Denoma in this video segment, let us be reminded and commemorate the efforts and sacrifices of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, who has not just fought for the Filipino people, but also he ignited the hearts of those who are blind from reality, who succumb from the who succumb from fear from the Spanish oppressors. And we, together with the group Tagapluma, here to advocate that that forever the memory of our national hero will remain within us. And together we're gonna fought for those who are afflicted and deserve justice to what is right.